Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sixth BTL exclusive on the Book It Sports Podcast Network. You are joined here by your guy Krabs, Javon, and Peter Apple, who is back to talk some baseball. Look, guys, we've got about two weeks until opening day. I cannot believe it's gotten here so quick. W's. All right. I know we're all very excited. Everybody listening, super stoked for the MLB season. Make sure you guys drop a like, stick around, follow us, and leave a review on the podcast. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you guys get them. All right. And drop a like on YouTube as well if you want to watch the live recording. We've got it on there at Book It Sports. All right. But Pete, Javon, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I think we just dive right into it here, gents. We're two weeks away and Garrett Cole already out for a month or two. Aaron Judge hurts mysterious injuries, x-rays. Nobody knows what's going on. Pete, the Yankees are plus 175 to win the NL East. Sorry, the AL East. How are we feeling? The season hasn't even started yet, and you've got two of your best players already hurt. What's going on up there? Yeah, it's not a year to invest in the Yankees. They haven't truly invested in themselves, right? They they go get Juan Soto, but Garrett Cole goes down, and the, they have seemingly not been willing to go get a Blake Snell or – make the trade for Dylan Cease. So why would I invest in a team that doesn't look like they're investing in winning a World Series? Simple. And that's to the people listening and not watching on the YouTube, Pete's saying that wearing a Yankees hat right now. Okay, he's one of the few Yankee fans who most of the time, you know, there are times when you turn into an OG Yankee fan and you're annoying, but most of the time you have a pretty good head on your shoulders with this team, right? And a pulse check right now, I mean, you can't be feeling great, right? You go out, you get Juan Soto. Life is good. He's hitting nukes in spring training. Everyone's happy. All of a sudden, your ace goes down. Your guy that's been your workhorse for the last couple of years, a guy that carried you last season, a guy who you're going to need to be Garrett Cole and to be that ace this year for you guys to make a run. He's already out for you know a month or two with this weird injury. And then Aaron Judge, like, what's the update on him right now? Two weeks out, Pete. What's going on? Yeah, I, I do think he's going to be fine. Um, so basically what happened was in a spring training game about five or six days ago, depending on when you're listening to this show, he had two at bats in a spring training game and Boone came out and said, yeah, he was only supposed to have two at bats, but then we hear he's kind of dealing with something. And then there's also in the off season, we hear the toe thing is going to bother him forever, which, you know, it, it might, but. I'm genuinely curious, you know, to the extent of how much it's going to bother him. I'm not putting a ton of stock into that. I still think Judge is going to be ready for opening day. But the thing is, just because Judge is ready for opening day doesn't mean he's going to be healthy the entire season, right? He's a six foot seven, 280 pound center fielder. I know what the Yankees are going to do. They're going to shelter him. He's going to play DH. He's going to play in right field. That's why they got Trent Grisham in that trade for Juan Soto as like that fourth outfielder going to play a lot of center field. So judge isn't really the issue. It's more Garrett Cole. And then when you factor in, when you traded for Juan Soto, you gave up Michael King, who was, I think is going to be a great pitcher for the Padres. And you also gave up Drew Thorpe, who has quite, possibly the best changeup in the minor leagues. And you gave up like Randy Vasquez, right? Johnny Burrito isn't there anymore. So you lost a lot of pitching depth and then Garrett Cole goes down. We don't know what's going to happen with Rodon. So I'm much more worried about the pitching than really Aaron Judge, if I'm being honest. Javon, what are your early thoughts on this Yankees team who has not won a championship in about 13, 14 years, right? They go out every offseason, they make moves, they spend, they fall flat on their faces. Uh, is this another, you know, repeat of what we've seen in the past decade and a half from the Yankees? Or are we going to see something different this year? Are they going to shock some people and finally win some games that matter? At the end can of the we, season. Can we stop? The Yankees made it to the ALCS <laughs> yes, in 2019. They have a record of 31 straight seasons over 500. You're acting like they're the bottom of the barrel. I get not betting on them to win the division. Let's not pretend that they're just dog shit. I mean, Pete, if you want to shoot for making the playoffs every year, you might as well be the Washington Wizards, my man. Uh, you guys they haven't won a game that matters. Ever. <laughs> That's not the oh. same. Go ahead, Javon. Javon. What are your thoughts on the Yankees? Obviously, I'm a little bit biased. Maybe Pete is a little bit too. We need an anchor on this one. How are you feeling about the Yanks? Well, I mean, I'm not completely unbiased either because I do hate the Yankees. So, I mean, I am expecting, like, uh, let's put it in the framework of before the Cole and Judge news came out, the injury stuff came out. 
I still thought they were pretty overvalued in the betting market. Usually they always are. So like I wasn't looking to invest in them for that reason alone. Obviously, I don't want any bets on the Yankees to root for those all season anyway. But I think they'll be better or thought they would be better coming into the season. I think they're going to be definitely more competitive than last year. That's not a, a really a hot take. You know, they added Soto, of course. The pitching staff is always going to be there. I do think I'm not as big a believer in the bullpen being as lights out as they were last year. Uh, coming into this year, obviously they lost a couple pieces there, um, but you know I, I am worried a little bit. Garrett Cole, we all know how these elbow injuries go. They always say a month or two, and I've certainly seen it as a Rays fan quite a few times. And it turns into Tommy John down the road. You know, not rooting for that to happen to the guy, but it's kind of the vibe we're getting after the uh, the lack of information kind of put off about it. And I'll be honest, I'm not getting really scared vibes from, you know, Judge coming back for opening day or longer either. But the fact that we haven't had more information on him is also a little scary, in my opinion. So I uh, definitely am in a standstill with how I feel about the Yankees. But one of my guys or one of the guys that I'm really looking forward to seeing this season is a guy who kind of flopped last season under a lot of pressure. didn't perform to what, you know, at least the fan base expected him to. Pete, I want to hear your thoughts on an Anthony Volpe breakout season that everybody's you know thought was gonna happen when he first got called up and he had to make a couple adjustments and now he's been working for uh or with a couple of guys including you know Juan Soto to make some adjustments to his swing over the offseason and you know in the spring he looks a little more comfortable a little more confident I think it's going to translate so like that's a guy honestly like in the power department too I think is going to be a big addition wherever he ends up in the lineup depending on you know, the injuries, however they may fall throughout the season. But that's the guy that if I'm looking for a bright spot on the Yankees and something to root for, because I really don't want to, he's kind of that guy for me. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think it's important to define breakout, right? Because offensively, this was a guy who had an OPS below 700. Like what is a breakout season look like for him right is it the stolen bases getting in the 40 range instead of in the mid 20s is it the home run department going from the low 20s to maybe the high 20s right is it a bat to ball type thing is his because his batting average I think he hit 209 or something like that so I guess to better answer your question like what does a breakout season look for Anthony Volpe in your eyes or is that your question to me I mean, I could pose that question to you, but I'll say this. I think a 30-30 season is not out of the realm of possibilities. For I don't Volpe. think so either. I think especially on the stolen bases side. I don't know if he has that power in his bat yet, but he proved that he can be a really good base runner. And that was what I think was arguably Anthony Volpe's best tool when he came up that at least looked like the most major league ready tool because he struggled defensively. He struggled with high velocity. And then, you know, when you're pounding him fastballs up and then you drop the slider low and away, he was just kind of overwhelmed because he's barely had any time in the minor leagues. The Yankees wanted to say, this is our shortstop of the future. And they gave him the bump and he played every day. So I think all of those games are super important for his development. However, I'm more looking at year three. I still think that there's going to be bumps in the road because I still think pitchers are going to be able to adjust to him. But then in year three, that's when I really feel like Anthony Volpe takes that next step into top 10 shortstop range, then potentially top five. And he builds on that over his career. I just think it's still a little early because he's still so young. But I do think he's going to improve from last year overall. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's going to reach his, his full potential this year necessarily. Like I definitely could see some issues bat to ball wise kind of lingering throughout the season. But I mean, something in the plums is just telling me the power surge is coming. I know I see a couple of the uh, prize pick season long squares like the multi home run game square has been staring me in the face. I usually have had one of those every season. Last year, it just happened to be Randy and Volpe is my guy for that this year. So I'm a, a big fan of the power search coming in, in little spurts this year. I'm interested to see, too, because stolen base-wise, um, I think a lot of that depends on injuries, right? Because I think to some degree, that lineup fully healthy and him being further towards the bottom to kind of generate offense for the top of that lineup or generate runners in scoring position is a bigger deal than that. So I like if Judge can stay healthy and the top of that lineup remain intact. I mean, he's he's going for 30 steals. So, I mean, I like that angle, too. And and just to end, you know, the point on Volpe, I think there's a good chance that he's hitting leadoff sooner rather than later. Yeah, that's, on what DJ that's, that's my big question. Yeah. yeah, I think he could. I mean, he hit leadoff parts of last year. So yeah. if he gets off to a good start and DJ, his bat speed is still slowing. Maybe we just say Volpe go in the one hole. Let's just get on first and then let's have Soto and Judge drive you in. That maybe could limit the stolen bases. I don't know. It's a little bit. But overall, I still think he's going to be a sound player. Glaber is a guy who I think is really going to have a great year. Yeah, I could get down with that too. Contract year. 
So I'm looking at their lineup, gents. I mean, it's looking pretty great if everybody's healthy and everybody's playing up to their potentials, right? You got DJ LeMay, who Anthony Rizzo hitting first and fourth, right? Those guys need to bounce back after pretty brutal, uh, you know, seasons last year. You got Soto and Judge right in the meat of the order at two and three. That's probably one of the best one-two punches in baseball. Definitely the best one in the American League. That's for sure if Aaron Judge can stay healthy all season. And then even at the bottom of the lineup, right? Giancarlo Stan looks like he's lost some weight. He's in great shape. Maybe he has a bounce back season. Glaber Torres keeps getting a little bit better every season, I feel like. He had a great year last year offensively. And you got guys at the bottom of the order who can play ball. Anthony Verdugo, Anthony Volpe, like you guys were just talking about, potential breakouts. You know, Austin Wells, nothing special really there behind the dish. But uh, this Yankee lineup, you know, the question is if, uh, if they can stay healthy, if they can play up to their potential, if these veterans – you know, can find some of their groove from previous seasons and bounce back after some down years, this team can make some noise. And that's why, you know, they're the favorite to win the AL East right now, plus 175. But there's a lot of ifs with the Yankees. And that's never a question you want to have with that team who is really due to do something this season. It's been a while. That that rotation, not looking too great. Right now I'm looking at Marcus Stroman as their one. And Carlos Rodon is your two with no Garrett Cole up there. That is not a recipe for success. They're going to have to outscore teams, and they're more than capable of doing that with Judge and Soto, right? I think Soto's going to have an incredible season. I think he's going to hit the ball to opposite field, shock everybody, not hit that many home runs to the short porch, and have an unbelievable offensive year, maybe even leading baseball in batting average, because he's going to prove to everybody that he's worth all this talk and worth all these moves, and there's a reason why Juan Soto at his age is one of the best hitters in baseball. He's going to prove that. With Aaron Judge hitting behind him, there's no way he doesn't, okay? But a lot of ifs with this Yankees team. A lot, a lot of, of them. And I got to say too, like uh, the one thing I am very concerned about, cause like the bullpen is good and they've shown that they can, you can get extended innings from them, but if there's no Garrett Cole and you have maybe a struggling Rodon. We'll see how he comes out this year. And then Marcus Stroman and Clark Schmidt, and we'll see how the rotation kind of shakes out throughout the year. But I fear maybe a race ish situation where you're getting a lot of a lot of strain on the back of that bullpen, which mm. obviously not rooting for injuries. But uh, if you're doing that for the entirety of the season, again, we'll see how the injury shakes out with Garrett Cole, most importantly. But I worry about that for the long term. That is a little bit of a concern to me. I don't know about you, Pete. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, that's what keeps me up at night, right? Especially when Garrett <laughs> Cole goes down, like who's going to fill 210 innings, right? Garrett Cole has been the model of consistency that's why he's known as the best pitcher in major league baseball because it's not just the two five era is going to put up it's the amount of innings that he's going to eat those days where we say hey you know we've played four games in a row cole we need eight from you tonight he'll get you eight who's going to give you eight now now i i think rodon is going to be better a guy that you guys didn't mention who i do think is due for a bounce back is nestor cortez jr but it, it does seem like a lot of guys who are going to be in the low to mid fours. And it's yeah. like a rotation like that, you're going to have to hit and your bullpen is going to have to be elite. And I do like the Yankees bullpen, but there's too many ifs in the lineup for me to invest in the team. That's why I, I put out, right? The Yankees win total was 93 and a half. And the video that I made, I said, I make them 92 and a half. I would lean towards the under. And I think that's mm-hmm. dropped now with the Cole news, right? So if you took advantage of that now at 91 and a half, values probably still there on the under I, I don't think this team should be the favorite to win the division let's talk about some of the other teams okay to win this division we've got the Orioles right behind the Yankees at plus 190 you've got the Toronto Blue Jays after a very disappointing year plus 400s the Rays always lurking never getting line respect the fourth shortest odds to win the AL East this year plus 600s and then the Red Sox down there at plus 16 hundo we probably don't have to worry about them Javon, real quick before we dive in, give a breakdown of this division and then, you know, hop right in talk about your race. I want to hear about Yeah, it. so I mean, uh, between the Yankees and I, I guess I could include the Blue Jays too. I'm not the biggest fan of them as far as contending for the division, but uh, you could say between the top four teams, not name the Red Sox, I mean, you could give a solid argument for any of these teams to win the division. And I know not just as a fan, but I feel pretty good about the Rays, so does Pete. Um, so it's a division with a lot of question marks this year and the injuries both to, you know, the Yankees with Cole and judge kind of lingering and the Rays have had a couple themselves. You also have the Orioles hanging out there with a a Kyle Bradish injury. So they're going to be missing some innings from a really good arm as well. Uh, it's a, it's a weird year in the AL East where I think a lot of value presents itself. So, uh, I think we can, you know, cut straight to it from the AL East P 
Pete, give me give me the Rays talk because I want to hear every single second of it. I bet the Rays over 84 and a half wins for 2.2 units. I bet the Rays plus 130 for a unit to make the playoffs. And I bet the Rays plus 700 to win the division. All of them. I want all Rays this season. This team won 99 games last year. And the reason there was a long pause there is because the same thing happened to them last year that's happening this year, right? Oh, the Rays just got gutted, right? There's no Tyler Glass now. There's no Wander Franco. They didn't have Shane McClanahan. They didn't have Tyler Glass now for the entire year. The rotation that we see now is very similar to the rotation that led them to 99 wins last year. It's still one of the best bullpens. It's still one of the best farm systems. Junior Caminero was supposed to start this year on the big league squad, but they don't have a spot for him right now because the depth is just incredible. I'm so far off from the market. I have this team 86 and a half. I think they should be in lockstep with the Blue Jays, potentially higher than them. I I mean, I could go all day about this team, right? We could break down each individual player and why I like them. I would not be surprised. Maybe this is a hot take. I think Ryan Pepiot could have a better year this year than Tyler Glass now. Now, I don't think that's probable. I still think Tyler Glass now was the more talented pitcher, but a guy like Ryan Pepiot came over from the Dodgers in that trade and was one of the better starting pitchers for the Dodgers when he came up. Put up a low two ZRA, and the thing with Ryan Pepiot is, in his first year, command was nowhere to be found almost as many walks as strikeouts 42 strikeouts 27 walks in like 38 innings it was not good he was still effective because the stuff was great guess how many walks he had for the dodgers when he came up in 2023 a lot five oh, that's five it. walks he didn't walk anybody that's why he had an era in the low twos because he finally found something and now he's going to the Rays pitching lab if he stays healthy sky's the limit right They got Zach Eflin from the Phillies, turned him into a borderline ace. Aaron Savali put up a five ERA with the Rays. Low threes expected. All peripherals look great. It's the same thing over and over and over again. It's not fun, right? It's not the sexiest group of names, but find me a hole. I'm having trouble doing it. Javon, do you agree with Pete's absolutely slurping your Rays left and right? Is it their year? Plus 600s. I mean, the fourth shortest odds, there's three teams ahead of them. What are the odds makers thinking? Is it just same old, same old with the Rays? No respects, yeah. only I great mean, results? They're, they're thinking the same thing they think every year. The Rays, like yeah. Pete said, they get they get gutted. They get no line respect. And on paper, you know, if you look and whether you're a, I don't know, lines maker, professional, better, whatever you want to call it, or just a common person, like the Rays lineup and rotation is not filled with names that you know. And they always figure out a way. And the thing about them this year, though, I will say there is a little injury concern with the lineup or with the rotation right now. They're reaching a threshold where if somebody else gets hurt. I'm going to be a little worried now that we have Todd Bradley, who I was at least hoping would get the opportunity to have a little bounce back. He's got a pec strain. We'll see how long that lingers. He's supposed to be ready for uh, ready close to opening day. We'll see how long that lasts. But uh, a couple back end guys also a little banged up. We'll see how that lingers. But um the rest of the team, like there's a lot of mini additions that they make every year that go under the radar and they pop up, you know, not Yandy Diaz level. I won't even go that far, but like a Jose Siri, who was a big power threat and speed for that for them, you know, in the through the stretch the last couple of years. Um, they made some outs. Like Junior Caminero, I was expecting to at least make an appearance on the roster, make the roster opening day, but they brought over Ahmed Rosario who's going to take some innings there. They brought over Jose Caballero, who's a power and speed threat there, shockingly. But um, I might have to interrupt this real quick to tell you some news, Krabs. Just a quick little NFL aside, Sam Howell's a Seahawk. (laughs) Just had had to let you know there. Had to let you know there. I mean, I figured he wasn't going to be on the team. I didn't know we were going to make a trade. So I'm assuming, right, it has to be a trade. Any picks involved? I uh, don't see any details yet, but yeah, so is... I, I got the details. So oh, Seahawks receive Sam Howell, a fourth rounder and a sixth rounder. Commanders receive a third rounder and a fifth rounder. Yeah, so it's a little All right. So we move up one round yeah. with two picks. Okay. Yeah, there cool you go. Yeah. I'm cool with it. I mean, yeah. making nothing but great moves. The commanders are right now. Nothing but great yeah. moves. Get your futures nothing in for the manners as well. It. Listen, love it. Right? Yeah, love it. He just yeah. locked his in the other day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Um, but, wrap up yeah. the race talk. 
Rev so up we do have to get talk. moving here, yeah. and we are all on the same page. All right, we yeah. do have a consensus quake here. They are going to be good once again this season. Uh, me as the Crabs contrarian brain, you know, I love back in a team like this that continuously, you know, year in, year out, you know, you find results and success without the big name guys and you just shipped away a couple of your big name arms. I'm so in to back the race once again this year. A lot of talk about the Yankees, a lot of talk about, you know, the Orioles, right? Finally spending some money for once, really on the come up and they are great. Toronto stacked as well. Nobody wants the Rays. They keep on winning. Why not take a stab at plus 600 to win the AL East? I'm yeah, in. and I'll say this. My guys that I'm really looking out for, I've already talked about Savali a little bit. Rays love working with cutter curve guys over the offseason, and now they've had a full one to work with him. So they're trying out some new things, like a stuff that I'm seeing from him. I think he's going to have a solid year right behind Eflin, who we've already seen what they did with him. So not too worried about what they're going to show there. And then one of the other underrated ads I didn't talk about, Richie Palacios came over from the uh, the Cardinals trade, and he is going to be slotted in at some more innings now in the outfield, partially because uh, Josh Lowe is coming into the season a little banged up, and I think he's going to miss a little bit of time. Uh, he has been a shocking kind of revelation for them, the way they're talking about him in spring training. Uh, kind of a guy that you knew would slot in and do race-like things, but those are the two guys that I'm kind of looking out for. Pete, I don't know if you have a, a guy or two that you're really looking to have a big year. It's just I mean, going to be deep, deep race talk or deep yeah. race lineup, no matter what. Who do I think is not going to have a good year? I mean, I'm just looking at a, I'm looking at a bench with Curtis Mead, who is one of the better offensive prospects in Major League Baseball. Ahmed Rosario, who just seems like the classic Rays figure him out when he took that inside fastball from Paul Skeens to left field. I just thought to myself, are you fucking, they did it again. And then Harold Ramirez, like these guys are on your bench. And I they guess. may not be big names, but like they're not bench bats. They're all legitimate. They could be starters. So they're just going to mix and match. And they're going to put in a guy you've never heard of, and he's going to go two for four that day because they found the exact matchup for him. And then the pitchers, right? It's just, it's the same thing. This team won 99 games last year. I've been watching the Rays ever since, I, like ever since they were the Devil Rays. And just in this Kevin Cash era, with their front office ever since Andrew Friedman, who's now the current GM of the Dodgers, he was there. They've created this hotbed of just incredible talent, and they're still coming up from the minor leagues. And it's like a guy who we not, aren't even talking about yet could be the impact bat. So it's like, <laughs> I'm just going to keep buying into the Rays until they tell me not to. I bought the Rays last year. I had the same pitch. They hit everything except the division, even though they still won 99 games. They lost the 101 Orioles. Now, if the Orioles rattle that off again, good for them. But I think the I think the Rays are going to win 90 games. Like, yeah. and I think they have a great shot at winning the division. Plus 700 was stupid. I make the line more like plus 450 or something like that. And the guy, I, I will say this for Harold real quick. I would be shocked if he's on the roster come a month or two. Then they'll but, flip him into someone good. I mean, who cares? Yeah, and they will. And the guy who you're talking about alluding to is not on the roster that nobody knows who's going to randomly pop up and just be good. Jack Mangum, Mississippi sure. State legend. He's sure. going to pop up out of nowhere and just be a dog because he's been Probably. another guy that's just weirdly shown promise in that system. Or someone else. Yeah. Or maybe it, like maybe I've never even heard of yet. I it's just they'll figure it out. I they know will. they will. And they can take my money. I've I've made so much off them in the past that it's like I'm going to keep riding until they tell me not to. Gladly. All right. Well, if the Rays have too many good players, feel free to ship some over to the Nats. They could probably yeah. use one or two guys. <laughs> All right. one or two. Let's talk about the O's, the new bright and shiny toy in the AL East. Are they the new bright and shiny toy? I don't know. I mean, this team, you know, every decade or so pops back up and makes some noise. But, you know, it's, it's a little bit different this year. New owner, right? Within the first week, goes out, signs Corbin Burns. Insane move. This Orioles team – not only are they stacked with youth and have a great, you know, just vibe around this squad, young, fun, energetic winners, right? They seem to be hanging out with each other. They go to concerts together. This team is a team, right? They're a collective. How do you not root for the O's, at least a little bit? Even being, you know, raising Yankees fans, you got to respect what the heck the O's are doing down there in Baltimore because it's not easy, okay, to do what they're doing down there. Now, are they going to bounce back and have an insane type season that nobody expects this year? No, it's impossible because everybody has them as their darling to win the AL East, right? Everybody's aboard the Orioles train after seeing what they did last season, okay? A lot of pressure on the O's. Very curious to hear what you two gents think about them. They are plus 190, the second shortest odds, right behind the Yanks. 
I have a weird feeling that the O's will be good, not great. Maybe they sneak in as a wild card, but something's going to go wrong. Everybody's just a little bit too high on this squad. We'll start with Javon and go to Pete. What are your guys' thoughts on the S? Yeah, to me, I'm kind of in the same headspace as you. I think they're going to be good, not great. And a lot of that has to do with I think the Rays are going to be a little bit better. But uh, for, I'll start it with this. I think Corbin Burns is going to be – the Corbin Burns we all expect and we all love. I think he's going to have prime Corbin Burns stuff. I think he's going to have an amazing season. But my problem is that I'm not necessarily there with as big of a step for Gray Rod in the second year as everybody's expecting. Uh, everybody's really high on Cole Irvin because the velocity is there, and I think he's going to have a better year. But I'm not as much there as everybody else is. So like the rest of that rotation, I don't think without Kyle Bradish is – as improved as it needs to be for them to take that next step as a team. So like everybody else, like there's plenty of room for all the guys in the lineup to make that jump as well. They almost have too many guys there, kind of like the Rays, where we really don't know middle to the end of that lineup, like who's going to step in and be those guys. And who knows if we're going to have, you know, some prospects jump up uh, come, I don't know, May or June, even maybe sooner. We'll see who makes the roster. But yeah, the, the back end of the rotation is what, doesn't get me there for the Orioles and the bullpen is, is great and they're going to figure it out. And certainly I think some of the guys can continue to take a step and improve throughout the regular season. But if we're talking, you know, Dean Kramer, Tyler Wells, who we started to see a lot of regression from last year and not quite there on the big G rod step. I don't know. I think they will be good. Definitely be near the top of the AL East, but I don't know that they're there just yet. Pete. In, in terms of pricing this division, I make the Orioles the favorites in this division. Um, I think there was plenty of games last year, right, where maybe all three of us, one of us, would fade the Orioles in what seemed like a sharp spot and they would win. Yeah. I think there's a chance that the Orioles might be just some model breakers. I think Adley is different. And the reason I think he is different is I think he could be the first MVP as a catcher since Buster Posey did it in 2012. I'm more high on individual players than I am this entire team because I do share some of the, you know, nervousness about the rotation. I also think that a guy who's not going to be on the team that kind of nobody's talking about, which I think is an enormous loss, is losing Felix Bautista and then yeah. putting in Craig Kimbrell. I mean, that's going from the top of the top to hold your breath, right? And the Orioles were so damn good last year because – if they had a lead in the seventh, the game was over. They'd go to Yenny or Cano, then they'd go to Felix Bautista, say goodnight. And now they still have a good bullpen, but the thing is with the Orioles guys, similar to the Rays, except more in terms of depth. They have everybody. I mean, they have a full minor league system that could compete with the Rockies right now. I mean, it's absurd what they have in the minor leagues when it comes to offense. I think this team is going to hit a ton. So when you're going to hit a ton, I'm not as worried about the rotation. Like if Dean Kramer goes five innings, three runs, they're probably going to win that game, right? And that's not that great of an outing. So I'm still high on the Orioles. I'm not betting the Orioles' futures. Still would make them the favorites. I just think there's no value on either side. So I invested in Adley. I'm investing in Grayson Rodriguez. Javon, I disagree with you. This guy is a freak. I mean, this is this is 100 at the top of the zone. We had him on the Just Baseball show. He's working on a two-seam. He's got a cutter, so he's got three different fastballs. But he's also got breaking balls, and he's got changeup. He has everything. He's been the top pitching prospect in baseball. And when he got called back up, we talked to him. At the beginning, he was... He was he was working the corners, which is not Grayson Rodriguez. And he even felt that he wasn't fully confident in his stuff. He was talking about his changeup, how that's supposed to be his best pitch, but he felt like he had no feel for it. Then he goes back down to the minor leagues, then comes up and is one of the best pitchers in major league baseball. Pitched to an ERA under three in the second half. Peripherals match up, strike a rate way up, walk rate way down. So I think he is next. And I think Adley's going to have a huge year. I think the Orioles probably win this division again. Um, but again, I'm not going to invest in them. That's hmm. my point. Yep. I think there's zero value whatsoever in the Yankees or the Orioles at this point. Obviously, not a hot take. They're both. I think there's actually the value in the Yankees. There's value in the Yankees and fading them. I don't think there's value in the Orioles sure. in fading them. <laughs> Love that, Pete. Was not expecting that Nuggets to be dropped from the <laughs> Pete, the Yankees fan with the Yankees hat on. But uh, I'm a realist. I mean, money, money is better than fandom, in my opinion. I'd rather make money. 
you know. That's what somebody whose team stink would always say, for sure. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> no. yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, Pete. Can we talk about a team that's maybe even more of a dumpster fire than your Yankees, a team that gets hyped for no reason in recent years and has yet to do a single thing, really doesn't even make the playoffs and has let me down, let betters down for the last couple seasons when there's been all this hype? Can we talk about Toronto, gentlemen? Because I think we can all agree that this team has wicked potential. Everybody, I'm assuming, is going to be hopping off the Toronto train after they were one of the most popular teams in futures last season, right, going into the year. Very exciting, cool, great rotation. We saw them fall off. Javon with the craziest call of all time. Alec Manoa ruining his career, saying he was toast. Turns out he is. I wouldn't be shocked. You know, my crabby contrarian brain starts to get going here. Maybe Toronto does something for once, but I'm walking right back into that same trap that I would have last season uh, when they really let down everybody. Are you guys in or out on Toronto this season? Javon, we'll start with you. Very curious. They're plus 400 to win the AL East. I'm kind of in between. I'm not going to be investing in them as a team. I do think they're going to hang around what the the bottom tier of those four teams between them, the Yankees, the Rays, and the Orioles. I think they'll be on the back end of that, and that's not really an insult because I think that division is going to be very good, just like it always is. Um, so I could see them sneaking into a wild card spot. We'll see, you know, how it shakes out with the rest of the AL between the West, which is also going to be very good, and we're going to talk about. But Central's probably getting one team realistically. So uh, I think they can make the playoffs. I think that's could be a decent like live middle of the season shot. I'll tell you, and I hate to say this with Pete up here, I am so in on a Vladdy bounce back year this year. And uh, funny enough, his his hit square is definitely what I'm considering for my go well. He was one of the unluckiest hitters in all of them will be last season and if there's any silver lining for the blue jays this season he's gonna have to bounce back and he's gonna have to play well this team went from you know shohei otani jet rumors to toronto to their uh premier off offseason signing being justin turner and ikf so like there's gonna have to be a vladdy resurgence and he got very unlucky last year i'm gonna bet and put my money on that he's gonna find some better results this year. If you look at a lot of the expected numbers, I mean, it's Vlad and everybody else, large gap for the most part. Uh, so I will be investing in that. But I think this Jays team could be another another good, not great team. I still am just not there with the pitching staff, like not up and down the board, just no incredible improvements, doesn't inspire any confidence. Pete, let the people know who are listening who might not know what Vladdy did to you last year, what he did, and what you're expecting out of Vlad this year if you're if you have the strength. To talk about fucking bloody <laughs> dude i mean like he, J uh, javon laid it out for you he was the unluckiest hitter in major league baseball and he was the last leg of my six legger and all five of the other ones hit Jordan under I home bet. runs nobody liked it that was Cash. a great call great right call. There, there was you know eloy under home runs wasn't even close kershaw under strikeouts wasn't even close shohei was crazy but like marcus Simeon over hits wasn't even close and then vladdy the unluckiest hitter in baseball comes up four hits shy of hitting the six leg season long um i mean i have the same opinion on the blue jays that i have every year except last year when i faded them if you're gonna give me a 90 win total i'm going under if you're gonna put it in the mid 80s that's exactly where it should be this is a mid 80s team Kevin Gosman probably won't be ready for opening day. That's like one of the aces that I feel like, you know, nobody's really talking about how his health is still up in the air. Um, I think Brios, you know, Kikuchi, Bassett, I think they're all kind of in the same breath, right? One's better than the other, right? Brios is the best, but it's like these guys don't wow me. And Bowden France is actually like in the five spot much better than Alec Manoa. Um, so I think the rotation is going to be pretty good. I think the bullpen is going to be pretty good. I think the offense is going to be pretty good. And then they're going to end up having a pretty good season. I think they missed the playoffs. I think they're kind of the odd team out. When I look at, I think the Orioles are better. I think the Rays are better. I think the Astros are better. I think the Mariners are better. I think the Rangers are better. Like there's only so many playoff spots. And then if you expect the Yankees to be better, again, that's more playoff spots. So for me, if I were to bet the Blue Jays, which I did not, I would bet them to miss the playoffs would be the bet for them. I see no value in the win total. I basically make it that 86 and a half. I'm actually making 85 and a half for anybody looking for a little bit of value. But overall, it's just the same Blue Jays team. 85 to 87 wins, pretty good. Maybe they sneak in and get bounced in the first round. I think it's just the same old story. I got to say plus 120 to miss the playoffs. Javon, yeah, final thoughts on the Blue Jays? 
the thing that I really hate about the Blue Jays, and this is not just biased Alec Manoa talk, I hate that he's just lingering around the rotation right now, which right now I think he's a, a little banged up, so they're going to find some other end of the rotation guys to kind of stick in to start the season, but he's just he's lingering, and he's going in and out of that rotation. So I feel like for those guys, whether it ends up being him or whether it ends up being you know Bowden or Francis coming in the back of the rotation, I hate that they're not able to develop a rhythm if he sticks around. So we'll see what happens other than the fact that he just, he sucks. So like he needs to be in the minors, whatever, until he fully figures it out. I hate that he's just lingering, giving them innings here and there, having his little experiment in the minors and coming back up. And I I can't believe in the Blue Jays if that is going to happen for a full 162. I just can't. Let me translate that for our listeners. If Alec Manoa steps on the major league team and eats up some serious innings for the Blue Jays, there's no fucking chance they do anything or make the playoffs. Yeah, pretty damn close. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. All right, we got to talk about the Red Sox here really quick. All right, I know we have some Red Sox listeners. They want to hear the scoop. They want to know what we think about their squad this year. Plus 1,600 to win the AL East. All right, not a great looking team. Okay, not a lot of hope, not a lot of you know excitement, a lot of people who believe in the squads. But is that the kind of Red Sox team we want to be taking a peep at? Do you gents think uh, this Boston squad shows any life in 2024? Javon, we'll start with you. I could see I've been having like a gut feeling that they go on like a little bit of a run where they show a bit of life. It's just this is not the look of a competitive team, especially like up and down with the pitching staff. I mean, Giolito's already uh, down now. We'll see how long that lasts. I like Brian Bayo, of course. I think he's primed for a breakout. We've been saying that for a little bit, but I mean, Cutter Crawford, okay. I guess a little bit of optimism. They added, you know, Liam Hendricks. You have the whole Tanner Houck experiment. Same thing with Garrett Whitlock and that whole experiment. There's just uh, another pitching staff that I really cannot get to the counter with trusting. And I mean, the lineup definitely has some high spots. Like I think Devers, if he does end up getting pitched to can have a really good year. That's going to depend on if Jaron Duran can stay in the lineup. Casas can continue his ascent and who knows what everybody else is going to do. Trevor Story's fucking terrible. And they added Tyler O'Neill to try and bring a little bit of protection. We'll see if that works. It's just, uh, there's way too much going on with this lineup and this rotation to make me believe. So I think they're still just going to be similar to how they were last year. Maybe just a touch better, but not by much. Pete, what are we thinking about the Red Sox? Not a lot of hope for the squad. Ton of boomer bust with this team. Uh, they're really fascinating, and the reason I say boom is I think Nick Pavetta really found something in the second half of the season. Strikeout stuff went way up, and he's a guy who's always had pretty good stuff, but just never really figured it out. And he looks like he has figured something out with the Red Sox. Brian Bayo is just a good pitcher, right? He's probably a good three. Right with the potential to be a two, but that's he's probably just a good three. Cutter Crawford is also probably a good three. Garrett Whitlock, when he's healthy, is also probably a good three. Right when you look at their rotation to the Orioles, it's not a ton different. Right, one has Corbin Burns, obviously, but I think in terms of a depth, like they have a lot of like Orioles type pitchers who are like pretty good with some upside. Right, like for example, Nick Pavetta versus Dean Kramer. I think Nick Pavetta is way more upside, right? Like even a Carter Crawford and a Brian Bale, like all of them. And then I look at the lineup. Like, is Trevor Story actually terrible? Yes, he's just been injured. He's been playing terrible. Yeah, but because he's been injured for the past couple of years. Like, I'm not ready to sell all Trevor Story stock. I'm also not ready to sell all of my Tyler O'Neill stock. I mean, this was a guy like a couple of years ago was an MVP candidate. Right, like they have interesting young guys. Like Sedane Rafael is a is a center fielder that we're really high on over here at Just Baseball. Like I don't mind Emmanuel Valdez. Tristan Costas, I think, is a stud. Yoshida is fine. I really like Duran. Obviously, Devers is very good. The bullpen is a little bit concerning. I think this team could win seventy games, or they could win like eighty five and really compete here. Ton of boomer bust. Really hard to make a number on them. So I'm just staying away. But if this team gets on a run, they're going to be a very interesting team to start betting game by game because when the offense is rolling and we're looking at some good pitchers here, they're going to win some series. So my long-winded way of I didn't see value on them in any market, but I'm very intrigued about what could potentially happen. The most likely scenario, 
is what happens, what Javon said. 77 to 80 wins. It's the most likely scenario. But I could see a ton of scenarios happening with this team. I, I just could, I don't really have a good read on them, but I am excited to watch them. I think they're an interesting bunch. I do get some like Royals vibes, not in terms of like how good or bad they're going to be, but I'm really looking forward to betting the Royals in like specific spots because I mean, the, the Royals bullpen is obviously terrible. I don't see the Red Sox looking significantly better. I'll say that, but they just have, like you said, a lot of boomer bust guys. So there's, uh, there is a potential for a lot of swing and miss in that lineup too. And I think for the Red Sox to be really good, I mean, everything has to go right. Like Trevor Story, Tristan Casas. I mean, look up and down that lineup with Tyler O'Neill. Like the swing and miss potential is through the roof. But if they're all hitting well in a really good matchup at the same time, that team can drop 10 runs on any pitcher or any pitching staff. So like game to game, I think they're going to be a really good team to target. It's just it feels like for for everything to go right, everything has to go right for that lineup specifically. Yeah, like they're one of those weird teams that could get swept by the Rockies and then go sweep the Orioles. Like they're exactly. just it's all about it's matchup dependent. So it's 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 an interesting one. Mm. Well, the Red Sox plus sixteen hundreds at the basements of the ALE standings, projected at least, and with the odds makers, not really believing in that squad either. It's gonna take a miracle. It's gonna take a perfect season, a lot us to go right for the Red Sox. Let's see if they can pull off any magic. We've seen this team shine when people have been down on them in years past. Let's see if there's any magic up there in Boston, any good luck up there with that Irish team up there in uh in Massachusetts, we will see. All right, guys, but no high hopes for the Red Sox. Maybe bet them game to game. All right. W's, AL East, killed that. All right, a lot of value on the Rays. All right, Orioles, maybe making some moves, but a plus 190, probably not. Let's move on to the best division in baseball, the one everybody's excited to hear about. Okay, the NL East, who, yes, of course, everybody's asking. I will answer the question. Yes, they do house the Washington Nationals, the best team in baseball. But the Braves and the Phillies are in their way, okay? The Mets are metting, and they're going out, and they're getting some guys this offseason. Maybe they'll be decent, probably not. The Marlins actually were pretty solid last year. We're going to talk about them. Very curious to hear your guys' thoughts about the NL East. Obviously, the Braves, the favorites, minus 240. That's some serious respect for Atlanta, especially with a very good Philly team right behind them. But they're only plus 310. That's not too much respect for Philly after the couple good seasons they've had back-to-back. The Mets, not too much respect, plus 1,100s, good. Miami, plus 1,600, can they replicate the season from last year? Probably not. And the Nats have some serious value down there, plus 10,000. Okay, we'll start with Atlanta. Want to hear your guys' thoughts. Are they the clear-cut favorites? Do you guys see anybody getting in their way, or is it Atlanta's year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to say anything more about the Braves. I mean, they, they're one of the, when you look like the top teams in the league, they're one of the teams that easily did the least to their roster, I would say, and it's for good reason. They they had no reason to. And the the one glaring thing that I think they tweaked a little bit was they bumped you know Bryce Elder out of the rotation, which is good because we are all I think huge anti Bryce Elder guys as far as the advanced numbers all go. We faded him a lot last season. It seemed to have caught up to him in the second half. And what do you know? They brought in you know Ronaldo Lopez, who I assume is going to slot in a little bit there. We'll see how that lasts and how they tweak it throughout the season, but. Braves are going to be the Braves. Simple as that. They're a big favorite in the AL East or the NL East for a reason, and I don't see any of those teams touching them to win the division. Yeah, I'll go real quick. Couldn't agree more. I actually don't mind betting on the over 101 and a half. I think they're going to be that fucking good. I mean, this team, when you get Chris Sale, you put him into the fold, and you should hear Alex Anthopoulos, the GM of the Braves, talk about how impactful he is. And I talked about on the just baseball show in the sense of like, yes, it's good to see what he's going to bring on the field. But what if the Braves been missing when they get to the playoffs? They don't have an edge. Like there's not like just that dude who's going to spit in your face. Like the guys on the Phillies or the fans at the bank. Like they don't have that just like grizzly baseball motherfucker, you know, but Chris sale is that guy. And they also added Jared Kelnick, who I still love as a bat, right? If the Braves can get any ounce of him out, he could be a potential star in this league, and nobody even gives a shit about him. I think Michael Harris is going to have an enormous, an enormous year. Um, Yeah, from top to bottom, no thoughts, just they are a juggernaut, and I'm not betting any team to win the division. It's funny, I bet the Braves plus 105 last year to win the division. Like now they're minus two fifty. They're just the class of the East. 
Yep. Well, Pete, real quick, would you take a stab at their over win total at 101 and a half at plus 100? Among the teams, like, but if, are you asking me, would I rather take the Dodgers at 104 and a half or the Braves at 101 and a half? I would rather take the Braves at 101 and a half. Mm. I'm not betting on either of them, but I'm saying okay. if you were like, I want to bet on the over of one of these crazy great teams, I would say do the Braves instead of the Dodgers, because I think both teams probably win like 102, 103 games. During the race, yeah, or and then you get to the you playoffs. Can take a cheeky you know. future on maybe the Braves having the most wins in baseball. Yeah, and don't hate that either. There. Don't hate that mm -hmm. either. Okay. Javon, any other comments? Any other bets? Any breakout players? I know it's a lot of the same old guys from last year. They're stacked, right? Not that many changes. Are you a Chris Sale believer? Any final comments on this Braves squad that's, I mean, an absolute wagon? And that's why they're minus 240 to win this division. God. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit of a Chris Sale believer. Um, it's obviously hard to project if he's going to be able to pitch for the entire season. I haven't really seen that, so I'm not going to bank on that. But uh, I would say this year for the Braves, I mean, it's hard to say breakout because a lot of these guys are coming off of, you know, career years. But the one guy that I'm very excited to see this season is Max Fried. I think he's going to establish, you know, a, a 1A, 1B if he hasn't already, you know, with Spencer Strider. I think he could even put up better numbers, obviously not strikeout-wise, says Spencer Strider, but I think he is going to be the best pitcher in the rotation this season. That's my semi-hot take for the Braves. All right. We all know they're loaded. Let's move on to some other team. Final comments. Even their bench is stacked. Like, they go out, they get David Fletcher, who's just a contact guy. He might hit 300 off the bench. Who knows? You know, you got Darno, you know, switching in and out with Murphy behind the dish. Insane backup catcher you got. Guillaume, they get, who's just a glue guy coming over from the Mets. I love that. Grabbing a guy role player from another division rival, right? Coming over. Absolutely love that. Maybe that's their edge this year. Who knows? Adam Duvall, they just re-signed. Even their bench is looking great. So this Braves team from top to bottom, there's a reason why they're minus 240 to win this division. It's because they're absolutely did. stacked. They'd have a really big loss with Eddie Rosario, who went to the, the other team, the NL East. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about revenge angles. We'll get there, Jamal. All right. Will He's Eddie got something to prove. Will Eddie Rosario half base? Like cool. against Charlie Morton, little like I can't wait. hope one the other way. Dude, that's I be can't it. wait. I'm that's not going to look at any data. It. I don't give a hoot about his matchup. <laughs> I'm betting that. Already done. Okay. Locked in. Let's talk about a solid team, though, before we get to the you know basement dwellers in the Mets, Marlins, Nats. Let's talk about the Phillies because they're actually good. Uh, plus 310 to win the NL East. Not a lot of respect from the odds makers there, you know, with how good they've been over the last two seasons. Are we buying into Bryce Harper and the Phils? Are we buying into, you know, Nats 2.0 with him, Schwarber, Trey Turner in this squad? Are they going to break through and surprise some people and maybe steal this division, Javon? Definitely don't think they're stealing the division. I don't know. I don't have many thoughts on the Phillies this season because, I mean, I feel like they're going to be in relatively the same spot as they were last year, just, you know, second cow to the Braves. And obviously, you know, that could change around a uh, playoff time, but at least in the regular season – it feels like a pretty similar team to expect similar output from. I mean, Bryce Harper is still going to be that guy expecting production from him. Same from, you know, Aaron Nola. So we'll see how a uh, Trey Turner can go throughout the full stretch of a season and hopefully avoid, you know, what he was doing at the start of the season to be more like the end, but not much for, you know, has changed for me looking at this team over the off season. It feels like they're going to be in line for a repeat in my opinion of last year's production. Yeah. Yeah. I with me and the Phillies, like, I feel like I've learned my lesson with them at this, some point. Like, I'm hoping they start off slow so then I can jump in, right? They're a team that is insanely streaky. There are times during the summer months where they win, you know, 9-10 in a row or at least make every game competitive and they look like a juggernaut worthy of a team. And then there's some times where the bats just don't show up to play. There's tons of swing and miss and they look terrible. So when they look terrible, that's when I invest. Because I think this team right now, is my World Series pick coming out of the National League. I think they are they have a fantastic roster. The bullpen is elite. The starting rotation starts with Nola and Wheeler, but Ranger Suarez is a good pitcher. I think Christopher Sanchez is a good pitcher. And you look at the lineup, where are the weak spots, right? You could say Johan Rojas in center, but like whatever, one to eight, they're going to bang. So I think the Braves and the Dodgers are the two best teams in Major League Baseball, but I really do think that you can make an argument for the Phillies as the third best team in baseball. I think that highly of them. I show a win of value on their over, but again, 
I'm not betting them now because I think I'm going to get a discount when they go on their regular weird slide where they lose six in a row and everybody's given up, then they're just going to come back and win six in a row. And then, you know, still be that team, you know, when they get to the playoffs every year, you still got to go play in the bank and you still got to deal with Wheeler. You still got to deal with these guys who have been there, done that Bryce Harper full year at first base. I think you could win the MVP. This team is absolutely loaded and they're in the discussion for outside of the Dodgers and Braves, that third best team in major league baseball. You didn't mention Taiwan Walker in that rotation. Any reason why? Yeah, I did that for a reason. You know, not every team is perfect. <laughs> you mentioned the other four guys. You didn't mention him. Okay. That's why they're not as good as the Braves and the Dodgers. They got Taiwan Walker. You know, he's probably not going to give you many wins, they're but he's not going to win 162. Yeah. No, their lineup is stacked. I mean, look, can they keep relying on crazy second halves at the end of the season? Probably not, right? I mean, if they sneak Maybe in so. from being moose at the beginning of the year and then getting hot at the end for a third straight year. I'll eat my words. I think they're going to have to change something up this season and get out to a better start. Um, and they can't rely on a crazy comeback for the third straight season. Now, with that being said, you finally start to see Trey Turner get comfortable. We know Schwarber's going to mash. We know Harper's going to be Harper. Come on now. Uh, after a year at first base and his, under his belt, like Pete was saying, comfortable, right? You should see that correlate to his, you know, at bats, at the plates. When he's comfortable in the fields, he's comfortable at the dish, right? All you need is his mind to be calm, and Harper's locked in, one of the best hitters in baseball. No doubts. Okay. Yeah. JT Real, Real Muta, one of the best catchers in baseball. Bryson Stott, who I feel like kind of fell off at some points last season. The year before, I mean, when they were making a charge to the World Series, he looked like one of the best young players in baseball. Like these guys, they're still here. They have the same dudes. And they rely on another late season surge. I don't know. And they're in a really tough division with the Braves. They got to play a lot. It's going to be tough for the Phillies. I think that's why they're getting some line disrespect, I would say, in my opinion, with them being plus 310. And Atlanta being all the way up to minus 240, it's probably why, right? It's going to be tough. Everything has to get perfect for the Phils. I don't think it's disrespect. I think it's more respect for the Braves, not disrespect towards the Phillies. That's how I kind of read it, where it's just like, yeah, I mean, look at the Braves roster. Like, they probably have a greater than 70% chance to win this division. I think the Phillies have the other 30, and I think the other teams have mm -hmm. legitimately no shot. It's kind of like that how I see it. So I think it's kind of priced correctly. Like, I don't think well, it's I disrespect to the Phillies. I think it's just the Braves are that good. I do agree. Let's talk about some of these teams that have 0%, all right, because they still deserve their time, all right? They're still teams, all right? We still have to love them. We still have to root for them, especially if they're the Nets, okay? But we're going to leave them for the ends. Can't rush excellence here. Let's talk about the Mets. They're a weird team, right? Last year, new owner in, in recent history buys everybody. Doesn't work. Absolutely backfires. They trade everybody away. This offseason, a little bit quieter. Sure, they bring in some guys, but it seems like they're taking more of a patient approach this offseason. I felt like Dan Schneider was calling the shots for them last year, the old uh, commander's owner, because he was just bringing in whoever the heck he wanted. Didn't work. Let's see what they do this season. Javon, what are your thoughts on the new-look Mets for 2024? Uh, well, I'll say this. Uh, they just announced that Jose Quintana is starting opening day, so – that pretty much sums up my thoughts on the Mets. I think the one little sliver of hope from that pitching staff was Kodai Sanga, and he's already on the shelf, it looks like, for some time. Uh, I mean, I'll say that for the lineup-wise, like I'm really excited to see what Pete Alonso does this year. I'm really excited to see what Francisco Alvarez does. I think he's going to take a massive step. He is so good in so many different ways. Um, but that pitching staff is bad. That's just nowhere, no glimmer of hope for me. I mean, they're a little deeper now, I guess you can say, than last year, but – Again, another staff that I just can't get there with. I think it's same old Mets for the most part until, I mean, maybe we see Sanga return at, at some point midseason. I don't know the extent of his injury. They haven't really given too much information on that yet, but he's the glue of any hope for that team. They'll be able to put up runs in some spots because, like I said, I love Pete Alonso this season. I love Francisco Alvarez too. We'll see what production level Francisco Lindor can kind of root or uh, get back to this season. I think he'll take a step as well, but, man. Uh, Luis Severino being the big headline addition for that team. I I can't. I just can't. Pete, thoughts on the other team from New York? I, You know, it's funny. I actually saw a little bit of value on the over. Um, I think this is one of those teams that's just been kind of thrown to the side. However, I do put them in the same bucket as the Red Sox in terms of like I'm not confident in my number at all because I don't know what I'm going to get from this Mets team. Like, on paper, look at the offense. 
The offense is fantastic, yeah. right? Like, I mean, just go through the roster. Brent Nimmo, top left fielder. Jeff McNeil, still a good second baseman. Francisco Lindor, top three at his position. Pete Alonso, 40 bombs. Francisco Alvarez, one of the best young catchers, right? And then if Brett Beatty gives you anything, because he has been arguably the worst third baseman since he got called up, and he's still a top prospect, like if he finds it, this offense is really good. And the bullpen is actually not that bad, right? Edwin Diaz, I think, is the best closer in baseball. Still like Ottavino, still like Brooks Raley. I think Drew Smith is good. Shintaro Fujinami, Jorge Lopez. Like, they still have guys in the bullpen. And then when Senga comes back, it's not the worst rotation. Like, I I made the number 82 and a half. And that's, like, kind of what it opened at. And then it kind of dropped to 81 and a half. I was thinking of buying in, but I just, I'm too unsure. There's so much up in the air, kind of similar to the Red Sox. But I look at this team on paper and I think to myself, they're better than what their win total says. But Senga going down, there's still so many question marks in the rotation. I just stayed away. Javon, no comments on G-Man Choi. Looking like he's going to be their (laughs) DH on opening day. I mean, that's that's a crazy sentence to hear out loud. But, I mean, yeah, I would say, like, the lineup, the problem with the Mets and betting on them a lot last year is we would get into, like, certain matchups and they would be – I don't know, horrendous, horrendously one-sided, depending on you know the injuries they were dealing with at that time. I will say when you look at even like the minor additions, whether it's G-Man, whether it's even like a, a Zach Short or a Harrison Bader or a Tyrone Taylor, it feels like the depth pieces are a little more well-rounded than last year, and they're definitely a little deeper too. So like I don't disagree with Pete in the sense that like there's gonna be certain matchups where I think you can bet the Mets because that offense is going to score runs. Um, it's just you know, over the course of a season, especially with them starting without Senga, I don't think that starting rotation is going to be able to keep it together. But the bats will be there. I can I can see a bounce back happening there for sure. Yeah, I'm with Pete on this one. I don't think I'm going to bet it, but I do think the Mets might surprise some people and maybe even sneak into a playoff spots, depending on the other teams in the National League, maybe grabbing the last wild card. I don't know. But if everything goes perfectly, we know the offense is going to be there. But if that rotation could somehow hang on and then you get a guy like Senga back down the stretch, wouldn't be shocked. I feel like back in this team after what they did last year where they let everybody down is the type of squad that I do want to back in the following season. Um, and that's why I could kind of get behind the Mets a little bit. And also, who the heck wants to bet on the Mets this season? After everybody's laughing at them, pointing what they did last year, oh, you brought in all these guys and trade them away. You guys are Bezos. That's the kind of team that I want to have my coins on down the stretch. Would not be would not be shocked if the Mets end up being, you know, the third, second best team in this division somehow, and they're hanging around. Yeah, right? for a bit. I need to hear P.O.D. Pete's Miami spiel. The people deserve it. He's pretty low on the Marlins this season. All right, they had a pretty good season last year, and I'm kind of on Pete's wave here too. With you know, you flip it after last year, shockingly pretty solid. This year, no chance they're going to be good. Can they replicate that? No, not seeing it happen. I need to hear Pete's thoughts. Give me your uh, top couple points as to why you think the Marlins are going to be moose this season. Yeah, so if you haven't heard yet, I made a 27-minute YouTube video on just baseball fans. If you go search that up on YouTube, telling you that the Marlins under 78 and a half wins is the biggest bet of my entire life. I think the Marlins are going to be terrible. The reason where it started was my co-founder, Arm Layton, huge Marlins guy from Florida, right? Has the beat on this team, friends in the minor leagues, friends on the team, like just has the beat on this team, just complaining about how terrible he thinks they're going to be. So I just do some research and I'm like, this team had the fourth highest one run luck in the history of baseball. What? And then I looked at how did the other teams do that next season? an average of eight losses more than they did that year. The Marlins are at 78 and a half is because they won 84 games last year. I make the line 74 and a half. I think this team has a chance of finishing last place. There's no Sandy anymore, right? This season, there's no Jorge Soler anymore. You look at the offense outside of Luis Arise, where's the impact? You look at the rotation, where's the impact outside of Jesus Cesardo, who has also not proven that he can stay healthy multiple seasons in a row. I look at a bullpen that way overperformed last year, and now they're not going to have, remember what we were talking about with the Yankees, with Cole, how it's like they're going to have to be bridge guys now that they're missing 200 innings. Like Sandy didn't pitch well last year, 
pitch right to a low fours, right? But he still threw 184 innings. Like, where are you getting those innings? Is it from AJ Puck, who you're converting from a reliever who already didn't make it as a starter? Is it Sixto, who hasn't thrown in a game since the COVID pandemic hit? Is it like who who's making starts for this team that you're afraid of? Braxton Garrett already on the shelf with shoulder stuff. Yuri Perez already on the shelf. And this is before I even bet it. I was totally fine having those guys in the rotation. So it's a team. Remember, my biggest future of the NFL season was the Commanders, right? When a team has hype and plays well, and it's a notorious dog shit division. One more thing, too. The most hilarious thing about the Marlins. Brant Brown was their hitting coach. And you talk to Marlins guys. They were like, he was great. We finally had a hitting coach who we could rely on. Finally had a guy who was giving us, you know, pregame data and he was really helpful. Guess where he's at now? Seattle. Rodgers? Nope, he's he's just gone. Seattle took him. The one GM who finally made the moves, had those nice trades right at the deadline, fired her. Yeah. They are just an inept organization that doesn't know how to win consistently. Like the last time that they were over this was like 2015 or so. I'd have to look back into my notes. This is all off the top of my head. There are so many reasons to fade the Marlins. So many reasons. I think they're going to bottom out. I think we're looking at, like, for example, the Marlins of 2022 won 69 games. What was the difference? Sandy won the unanimous Cy Young. They weren't on the right side of one-run luck. They won 12 straight one-run games to start the year. It was one of the luckiest seasons in Major League history. I lost so much money on that team, man. Exactly. (laughs) So much money on that team. Like, for example, a team like the Orioles were good in one-run games, right? Makes sense. They have three unbelievable – I bet the Astros are going to be great one-run games because they have Hayter, Abreu, Presley, right? Tanner Scott's good. Like, that's it. It was just pure luck. And it's not an organization that I respect at all who keeps kicking themselves in the nuts. I'm fading them, fading them. If they go over, I tip my cap. It's probably going to be lucky again. I I think this team wins 72, 73 games. Goes way under. I don't even think it's going to be a sweat. Listeners, if you guys didn't hear that, I'm going to go ahead and reiterate. P.O.D. Pete's largest bet ever. Marlins under on their win total. All right, we got to keep moving and grooving here, folks. Javon, quick thoughts on the Marlins. Uh, Quick thoughts. Uh, It's when you look at this rotation, especially with the injuries, it's a lot of guys that we can religiously look at and say, you know what, in this matchup, they're going to give up 10 runs. Like uh, up and down, like guys that are going to make starts, like whether it's Ryan Weathers, whether it's Sixto, and and if he ends up getting massive innings, we'll kind of see. But when everything goes wrong for him, it goes wrong. And even – uh, a lot of there's a lot of projects, you know, up and down that rotation. If you throw like AJ Puck into it too, it's just they're trying to find what sticks. It's kind of the sign of a team that knows they're not going to be incredibly competitive this year. So I will certainly hop on board with fading and reaping the benefits. And they're going to have to play the Nats a bunch. Those are yeah. losses, right? Just think about this for a second. Help. Think about this for a second. The Marlins are minus 145 favorites at home opening day against the Pirates with Mitch Keller versus versus, uh, Jesus Zardo. You think they win that game? Maybe. That's the thing. I'm ready ready to fade in the next four games. Yeah, like that's (laughs) the game that they would have to win. They'd probably lose. Like I think the Pirates are better. Pirates have a 73 and a half win total. I think the Pirates are better. It's like. I just don't, I don't, if they don't get insanely lucky, like, do you know how many games I bet on the Cardinals money line where the Marlins like won, you know, by coming from behind where it was on an error? Like it was just the luckiest season in major league history. And it's not just, oh, I saw some games that were lucky. No, by the numbers, one of the luckiest years in the hundred years of major league baseball, they're tied with the 1909 White Sox for luck. Pythagorean win I mean, expectancy, 75 wins last year. I, it's just not – I'm fading them till I can't anymore. As you should. Extremely passionate. Love yeah. it. Love the sell job. All right, Marlins are going to be missed. I agree. Terrible. They're going to play the Nats a couple times. They're, they're kicked. All right? Speaking of the Devils, 
Let's talk about them real quick. Perfect way to wrap up this podcast, talking about the 2019 World Series champion, Washington Nationals, okay? Plus 10,000 to win the NL East. Talk about value. Not actually. I wish it was. It's not. Maybe. Please stay away from this team. Please. <laughs> Stay away from this team. Here's what I'm going to say. I will get my spiel on this because this is my squad. All right? Here's their lineup. C.J. Abrams, Lane Thomas, Joey Gallo, Joey Manessis, Keeper Ruiz, Eddie Rosario, Nick Senzel, Luis Garcia, Victor Robles. That lineup is terrible. Uh-huh. That lineup it's is not, absolutely it's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. That lineup is atrocious. <laughs> that lineup is going to have 30 combined home runs at the All-Star break. They are bats. I mean, 30 bombs, they though. They're going to they're gonna be fun. 30. 20 of them are going to come from Gala. All right. And then you look at their starting <laughs> rotation, gentlemen. And we've got Patrick Corbin still at the two. At least he's not the one this year. Last year, he op- he was on opening deck. All right. <laughs> this year, it's going to be Josiah Gray probably here. And thank goodness. Um, besides Josiah Gray and Mackenzie Gore, I mean, is there a single arm on this team worth anybody's time? I'll, I'll answer for you. No, no. there's not. Jake Irvin. There's okay. not. Jake Irvin's okay. Jake Irvin? Yeah, Jake I, Irvin. I, I bet on him on the Marlins. Put him on the Marlins, on Marlins on. because he – check his luck rate because he must be the luckiest guy on earth. <laughs> I bet okay, on him. That guy's more. stuff is moose. No. I bet on him probably six times last year. I think I went three and three. Just saying. Well, uh, you'll you know. buy a lottery ticket because you've got a horseshoe <laughs> up your butt. That's crazy. Trevor Williams is in the rotation, gentlemen. Anytime Trevor Williams is in any, any rotation, you're looking for trouble. Okay? Yeah. Then you go and look at the bullpen, and this is the worst part of the whole shebang. Not only is this team going to have to rely on their offense to win them games, but they're going to blow these games they're winning because their bullpen is terrible. Kyle Finnegan is the closer. Enough said. Enough said. That guy might as well be a worse Craig Kimbrell. He blows saves like it's his literal job. Hunter Harvey I like. I will say that. Tanner Rainey I like, but his arm is hanging on by a freaking thread. Bless his heart. All right? He's just trying to get a couple more innings out of that puppy. All right? This team stinks. Their bullpen is atrocious. Sure, they have some flashy pieces. Sure, they have some prospects coming up, probably not until the end of the year or next year. They are in zero rush, okay? Sure, they have Abrams. Lane Thomas, if he replicates the season from last year, I will do a backflip off my desk. That was incredible. The guy's a lefty merchant. He's going to come back down to earth. Joey Gallo stinks. I hate to say it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope he proves me wrong. Joey Gallo's back. Joey Manessis. Was a great story for a year. Get him off my team. He's 40 years old. Caber Ruiz is pretty solid. All right. But these guys are bad and they got to go play against the Phillies and the Braves a lot of their games. G fucking G. All right. And last year, talk about luck. They played great in one run games. They were actually one of the luckier teams in baseball. They were one of seven teams last year against the spreads that was profitable. That if you bet on them every game against the spreads, you would have been up money and not lost your coins. They were up there. Okay, they actually shocked some people, and I go as far to say they overperformed last season. They fought hard as heck for their manager, David Martinez, to keep his job. That's all they did. And then they went away at the end of the season when it didn't matter anymore after they resigned him. This team stinks. Last year, they were okay, overperformed. People see these shiny new toys. They hear the Soto trade talk and these guys coming up. Everyone's hype about DC and the, and the Nats right now. People are saying the Nats are going to be solid. They are going to be atrocious. My favorite future of the season, Nats win total under. They're not even going to sniff sniff 65 wins. Remember last year they put them up with the Athletics to have the worst record in baseball? They were a year off. Yeah, that's it. This is the year they're going to have the worst record in baseball. And it's not because their lineup. They will win some games because of their offense, all jokes aside. It's because they have one of the worst pitching situations I have ever seen. And I didn't even mention Strasburg's name. Because he's getting paid half our salary from the pitchers. Didn't even mention his name. Worst situation ever. Can't win games with this roster of arms. Fade the heck out of them this season. I'm seeing people gassing them up, taking them, thinking they're going to be winning games with their offense. They have no chance with these arms up on the box. So fade the heck out of them. My favorite future of the season, Nationals win total under. Yes, wow. you heard that correctly. It's a banger. It's a banger right there. It's not much to say after that. I got nothing for you. Um, Any arguments? I, I think they'll be. I think it'll be better than the Rockies. So I don't think they'll be the worst in the National League. That would be my analysis. Uh, Javon, thoughts on the Nats before we wrap this puppy up? The only reason they uh, won a lot of those games last year is because Lane Thomas had an absolute hemiphy season. And while I still like the guy, I don't think we're seeing a 
repeat of that this year. So I love CJ Abrams. I think he'll uh, bust out into the scene like everybody's always hoped he had, but everything else looks pretty slim. So I'm going to tip my cap and say I'm with you on fading the Nats. Krebs, yeah, you, you're want really- to, you want me to make you feel bad real quick? Please. You know Kyber Ruiz put up the same F4 as us three last year? Zero. Zero. He was still working on some like least valuable player last year, and you're like, he's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, he was he cool. is still working. He's still working <laughs> through some kinks. All right, no, he's I mean, got a he, new. He's like a bad defender who can't really hit. Yeah, he can. It, it, the power's coming. He's going to be a late bloomer. He's a late. Bloomer. He's going to be a late bloomer. The power started to show in the second half. I feel like he was just taking absolute daddy hacks up there, and it was working. He was hitting nukes. Maybe he just has to swing harder. That's what my dad used to tell me. Just swing, swing like a man. Swing harder. It could be just, it could be a grit thing. Just freaking yeah, get maybe he just doesn't care. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's a job. Like Look, guys, there. Victor Redlace is on the team still. Okay. Strasburg has taken up, you know, half our salary cap. Corbin's taken up the other half. This team is fucked. <laughs> All right. Stay away from the Nats this season. Sure. We can root for Mackenzie Gore. Sure. Okay. Sure. That guy's a stud. They've got a couple fun young pieces, but they are a year or two away from James Wood and Dylan Cruz. And the rest of these great prospects are about to come up and shock the world, but not this year. Okay. Fade the Nats, fade their win total, stay away from them. You're going to rip your hair out betting this team this year when they're up seven to five in the eighth and they lose 10 to seven. It's going to be heinous. All right. W's, I wish I could have said something better about my Nats, but at least you guys know that I'm honest. All right. W recaps. All right. We roasted the Yankees. We talked about the Nats for a little bit. That's a pretty darn good day for me. If I could say so myself, gents, appreciate you guys as always coming on real quick, Pete, plug your socials and plug your show. Where can people find your content? Absolutely guys. So I put out a couple of YouTube videos. Um, I have a bet pass or lean on all 30 teams. That's up on our YouTube. Uh, you can just search just baseball. You should be able to find us. Um, and I host the just baseball show, you know, five days a week during the season where we're just talking baseball all the time. So, and I write a daily article on just baseball.com. A lot of baseball. A lot, a lot of guys. Of he guys. does a lot, folks. A jack do of a all trades. Jack all right. Trade. NFL guy. Go check out Just Baseball. If you're listening to this, you probably already do. But go check them out. Uh, the best coverage of baseball by far. All right? Thank you. Appreciate you, gents. Appreciate everybody listening. I hope you guys enjoyed the ALNL East Division preview for the upcoming MLB season. My Nats might stink, but we're two weeks away from baseball. That's all that matters. I don't care if they lose every game as long as we have baseball. All right, gents? We will be back at some points with the AL and NL West preview. So stay posted. Follow us on YouTube, Twitch. Uh, We have a behind the line show every single day at 1230 p.m. Eastern. Talking winners, talking bets, and just shooting the shit, talking sports. So join us on Twitch or YouTube. Go subscribe on the YouTubes. And we will catch you guys in a couple days when we go over the final couple of divisions. All right. Two weeks away. Cannot wait for opening day. Make sure you guys follow the Book It Sports Podcast Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, and we will be seen. We'll catch you, gents. Peace.